Hi, my name is Sai, and this is me playing Doom on the Corsair MM300 Extended Pad. The right mouse is very important, but so is the right pad. There are five main things that I look at when choosing one. Size, design, durability, tracking, and the speed of it. It's important to get the right size. Some people learn to use really high sensitivity due to there being no room to move the mouse, but if it's too large, it may not fit on the desk, and that could cause it to buckle. The MM300 comes in small, medium, and this is the extended version, which measures 93 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And the stitched edge appears to be four millimeters thick, but it's listed as three millimeters. The design is also important because the wrong materials could cause issues with certain sensors. To test this out, I'm going to use a laser mouse and an optical. Here's the laser at 400 dpi, sensitivity four. And we can see it's really jittery. Now at 800 dpi, sensitivity two. Getting a bit better, but as always, I recommend hard pads for laser mice, and this is why. 1600 dpi, sensitivity one, isn't too bad. And 3200 dpi at 0.5 sensitivity is quite good. But some say using higher dpi adds some delay. I'm still not sure. Now just a few rocket jumps, testing general feel, and it's fine, no chance of spinning out. Now the same tests with the Corsair M65 with the 3360 optical sensor, known as one of the best. First at 400 dpi, sensitivity 4. And this is why I don't recommend using 400 dpi. Even with one of the best sensors, it's still a bit jittery. 800 dpi at sensitivity 2, see some improvement. 1600 dpi at sensitivity 1, looks quite good. And 3200 dpi at sensitivity 0.5, looks great, but again it might add some delay. So 1600 seems like a happy medium. In the line test, the purple lines are the 9800 laser sensor, and they're at the top. And of course I saw the usual jitter of a cloth pad, but with the 3310 optical in the greenish blue color, it was all good. I compared it with the HyperX Fury pad, which is a standard black cloth pad, and I got very similar results. It seems while the MM300 uses a range of greys, it doesn't lose any performance at all. For durability, this has smooth, high quality stitched edges, which prevent the top layer from lifting, and the surface material is smooth too, so it shouldn't wear out your mouse feet. You also don't want a pad to slide around, so on the base, it has a textured rubber. They say that this can cause an inconsistent surface, but compared to others with the same base, these are very well controlled. Like all other Corsair products that I've tested, the quality is very high. Back on top, it's a close-up of the weave direction. I would call this a speed cloth pad, as there is very little friction, but it's a lot slower than hard pads, of course. It's hard to quantify what this feels like, but I felt most comfortable playing at my usual 0.9 sensitivity, and I use about a 29cm 360 these days. Bonus point for Corsair, as their logo isn't raised, so it won't interfere with your mouse. Here are some more highlights from Quake Live and Doom. In conclusion, this is a great pad, and with its grey scheme, black mice don't just get lost on it. It should suit any setup with silver, or even full black. If I were going to change anything about it, I'd make it at least 35cm tall instead of the 30cm. Why you should buy this instead of the others, high quality materials and stitching, and the unique grey scheme. Hope that helps, if you want to purchase one of these, I'll leave links in the description to M-Wave in Australia and Amazon. Also check the description for more information. Special thanks to Corsair for sending this out for a review, and a shout out to Corsair's rep, Chris Mayo-Smith. Go follow him on Twitter for esports and Corsair updates. Subscribe for more reviews and gaming videos, like this one, and I'll catch you in the next.